Um, so it's it's a real issue, um, and you know, and what does it mean? Well, you know what what's hap what happens is, you know, employers are are trying to respond, and, and everything that you see here in black, really it, it falls into three different categories. It's attempts to negotiate lower costs. It's more closely managed the care that's being delivered, and, and you know it's whatever it was referring to, where you know all of a sudden now we've got you know insurance companies telling doctors how they should you know treat people, uh, which when you think about it is kind of strange, but that's what you know that's the only way that's that's one of the ways that during the 90s at least companies were able to keep their trend rate down a little bit by just artificially managing that cost. Um, the other thing that's going on is, you know, trying to increase employee awareness about the cost of care. And that goes under a whole different variety of names, consumer-driven health care, um, you know, wellness and prevention, those are all things too. It's, it's trying to make the employee more sensitive to the fact that this does cost money. Um, but unfortunately, when, you know, when you have to reduce what you're able, when, when you have higher costs uh, and you're trying to manage a business, you know, if one cost goes up, what do you do? Well, you look to cut elsewhere. And so, unfortunately, what happens is, because medical costs are going up, you have less to spend on salary increases. You have less to invest in the business. You have less, so that, you know, less money to hire new people. And when people talk about healthcare being critical to, you know, our overall competitiveness as a country, that's what they're getting at. You know, you, and you, you're, 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 you're limiting what, what can happen. Um, you know, one area that's getting a lot of attention is, you know, the whole wellness and prevention program, and you hear a lot about that in the news now in terms of, you know, what's going on with healthcare reform. And, um, you know, I, there's just that you've heard some people already refer to it. I'll just throw out one more stat. In 2005, half of Americans did not receive recommended preventive care, which is vaccinations, cancer screening, blood pressure checks. So what happens? Well, we don't pay, we're not paying up front for the preventive care, so they end up getting, we end up having to pay for it through emergency room visits and, you know, late stage of cancer, which is very expensive. Um, wellness and prevention makes sense. I think we'll probably come back to that when we talk about healthcare reform. But I can tell you as an employer, um, it, it, it's tough because we have a very transient workforce. Um, you know, people don't stay at their job for their entire career. I mean, they're lucky if they stay, we're lucky if we keep people for, you know, three, four, five years. If you're going to invest in a wellness program, it's going to take time to get the payback. So, we had this discussion in our company. Do we want to invest in a wellness program? Somebody pulled out the attrition statistics and said, why do I want to do that? I mean, I'm going to make this guy healthy so that when he goes to the next employer, they're going to get lower costs? It doesn't help me. So, you know, there's a reluctance to invest in that um, because it's so peaceful. Um, last, last, last slide. Um, impact to employees. Um, you know, unfortunately, employees are are bearing the brunt of the pain. Um, you know, employees and employees' families. You know, and, and, and there's at least one person in the audience I know very, very closely who you know ends up having to spend a lot of her time, you know, arguing with you know the insurers to try to get them to cover things that I told them not to cover. <laughs> Which makes for a very interesting conversation around the table, believe me. Um, and um, you know, so and costs are going up, the hassle factor is going up, and the net result, and this is what's really the, the, the shame and the criminal aspect of this, if you will, as an employer, we've 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 succeeded in taking what should be an employer an employee satisfier and made it an employee dissatisfier. Um, so we're spending a bazillion dollars on this benefit program and the employees are just pissed off. That's <laughs> good. They're just upset about it. <laughs> um, and you know, and it, it's just it's just unfortunate. And um, you know, I've got some ideas on healthcare reform, but I'll share those. Great.